Hi, welcome to the Linux channel. So I shot few episodes on uh, Linux uh, file system uh, subsystem, but these episodes are more focused uh, towards uh, uh, the internal uh, kernel APIs and as well as uh, data structures and stuff like that. So you can see here uh, I shot uh, just couple of episodes on uh, Linux. Uh, kernel file system uh, subsystem so you can see here i shot an episode uh, the first introduction episode i shot about uh, the apis like a register file system unregistered file system and then um, you know few data structures and then uh, followed by which i shot an another episode on uh, I know it's and uh, uh, various uh, file system uh, types and stuff like that but uh, yesterday I was having a discussion uh, with uh, one of my student uh, uh, Ramin and uh, he was asking about uh, uh, the role of uh, VFS and I was explaining the same and I was giving certain examples uh, uh, in uh, a system like Linux versus in a system like a Windows system so that it is easy to understand the role of VFS because the VFS itself is something which you can see in Linux whereas in Windows you don't have such a concept and this is where it makes us easy to understand the role of a VFS which also stands for virtual file system. So if you uh, read about it in uh, Wikipedia okay you can uh, find the same and they have uh, neatly documented and I would like to give uh, some add-on other than uh, generally uh, you can of course you can go through this documentation yourself but I thought let me give a sort of broad perspective so that you get that full picture of the role of you now VFS in uh, Linux uh, kernels uh, file system subsystem so if you go here they have mentioned this uh, beautiful uh, you know diagram architecture diagram so you can go through the same in that if you notice uh, you can see here they encapsulated all these file systems within this you know vfs you know block so that is the role of uh, virtual file system is that to provide mainly abstraction of all the file systems so that from the user space when you visualize you know the file system uh, of any storage device let it be physical storage devices uh, uh, mounted via hard drives ssd drives or else it can be any sort of ram drive or it is a dvd or cd or any kind of storage device you get this abstraction so here is the catch whenever you do such an abstraction there are certain file system types which may not need certain attributes in that file system type so if you see if you go here and if i do ls minus l you can see here there are these uh, permission attributes and then you have this ownership and uh, stuff like that and then you have this you know file size and its uh, date and its name and uh, stuff like that so if you see an example like uh, you know uh, uh, dos file system so in that case uh, i mean fat uh, file system versus ntfs file system because ntfs file system you have that uh, ownership and permissions and stuff like that but if you compare it with dos file system or fat file system fat 32 or fat file system if you see you don't need certain attributes like this you don't need uh, you don't have certain attributes like that uh, like permissions and uh, ownership and stuff like that so in that case even though you have such a file system once you mount it in a linux system it is still going to show you this way so this is the actual uh, reason you have that vfs that it will consider whenever you mount a fat file system it will show it has that full permissions so it will always show as full permission because again you are getting that file system access through vfs so vfs does that it gives that unified uh, you know um, unified uh, look and feel to the user space world so whenever you access this file system from the user space you get this vfs abstraction and that vfs abstraction unifies that experience of you know accessing a specific file system so no matter whichever file system you access like they mentioned in this you know diagram whether it is fat uh, or uh, you know uh, i mean whether it is fat or uh, ntfs or ext4 or you know nfs or let it be whatever file system it is all getting unified 
look and feel to the user space and it is provided by VFS. Let us take an example. I got this uh, uh, small thumb drive. Uh, we can mount and we can see what is the file system and if it is not fat file system we can format the same as fat file system and then we can remote the same and uh, if you see it should have that same look and feel like any ext4 file system so this itself is a proof that existence of vfs we can see always its existence through user space so let me just insert the same yeah Yeah, you can see here it just came up and uh, I can uh, go to properties before even formatting and uh, we see it has anything which is mentioned. So we go to disks in accessories and if you go here you can see it's you know it earlier had uh, you know Ubuntu you know it is having that Ubuntu uh, boot up a disk uh, you know ISO file mounted over the same I mean uh, uh, it's been uh, burnt over the same so that once you uh, reboot the system and boot with that thumb drive uh, Ubuntu uh, installation and uh, the live uh, uh, no OS boot can happen with this thumb drive so if you go here uh, you can see here it is uh, ISO 9660 and uh, so what we can do is we can entirely remove this uh, partition and uh, uh, before the same I can unmount uh, this drive yeah unmount and this as well it is already unmounted I can delete it delete okay I can delete yeah it has some kind of an error let us see how mount selected delete selected partition okay for now let us ignore the delete option and we can just do a format uh, we can just do a format we try doing a format Yeah, there are other options to deal the same you have also G parted let me open uh, with the same and uh, we can see how we can fix this issue you have it in uh, system tools disk usage analyzer Or else I'm thinking uh, let us take some other uh, or else uh, yeah let us just do this mount yeah I can uh, mention uh, as fat file system fat fs yeah let us do a format we see if it gets formatted if it is not let me just safely remove this drive let me take something else as an example so let me take some other you know drive I have some few uh, memory sticks over here let me take something else as an example so this is an SD card let us try the same uh, doing over here yeah it has this uh, Nikon uh, uh, thing which is uh, you know uh, the file system is created and let us analyze uh, this particular file system we go to disks and we go here and uh, you can see its allocated file system type is uh, fat file system so this is a typical uh, fat32 file system and this is a good candidate for us because we don't need something which is a native file system like ext4 because if you do with native file system of course you will get this you know interface and uh, I mean uh, this experience in the user space and some has read write permissions and some has uh, read only permissions for other users and groups so if you go here uh, media and uh, Nikon 
and if you do ls minus l here what should happen is you should have some kind of you know unified look and feel cd1 so it doesn't have much files so what i can do is i can just copy some few things few files copy and paste yeah it uh, mounted as read only or else i should do with the sudo permission uh, ls minus l uh, cp you know home start cp home star dot png dot yeah it got copied as you can see here it doesn't set any more uh, permissions and even if you set it is going to reset once you unmount and remount the same because it doesn't have these you know permissions in its metadata so if you set the permissions say suppose vh mode 777 star okay it doesn't set the same because it is not a true uh, <laughs> you know native file system type so if you do the same it's not going to set over here so if i go to home folder ls minus l ch mode 777 star dot mp4 if i set for these you know set of files ls minus l you can see here it is affected so this itself is the proof of existence of vfs so this is how you can experience the vfs so this is not something possible with uh, uh you know all the operations it is not something possible with every kind of file system but having said so with the existence of vfs because of vfs you get that unified look and feel uh, if you consider like fat uh, file system there is no ownership uh, of that uh, you know files so owner uh, and group logic which is applicable so still you get that you know look and feel so once again we can go to media nikon we see setting some uh, you know ownership ls minus l ch own root root star dot png yeah as you can see it is not allowing the same let us try with the sudo permission yeah still it is not permitting it so the reason is again uh, you know vfs so this is how it is so so you can see here it just mounted uh, with the user uh, you know kiran so it just shows them as dummy entries these are just dummy entries this is not really doing anything to that actual you know sd card so it's just a dummy entry so this is the role of vfs this is the sort of abstraction you get with vfs so that itself is you know mentioned over here and you can go to a much simpler diagram if not something so complex like this uh, linux uh, vfs and if you go to images uh you can open any simpler images you can see here all this user space processes like what we seen here you know this is a user space access all the user space processes whether you write your own c code and then you access the files or else you use something like this it doesn't matter anything which which you do in user space you have the abstraction in the kernel provided via vfs and inside the vfs you have this dcache and inode cache and these are things i may discuss in future more in depth and then below that you have the real actual file systems and then below that you have this access to the device driver and then the real physical hardware itself so this is what happens so this is the role of vfs in a linux system its purpose is to abstract the file systems so that you get the unified uh, look and feel you get that unified access uh, whether it is uh, you know fat file system it may not have certain file attributes applicable to that file system type but due to the presence of vfs it abstracts everything and it shows that unified look and feel since these uh, you know uh, 
attributes of those files are just like that it has been created it's just virtual entries you know some are applicable some are not applicable like what we seen here so these are just you know uh, dummy entries which kernel created so these are not real ones which associate to that sd card file so this is the reason some are real and some are not real and if you try uh, ls if you try doing a file name change even a file name is an attribute uh, or else uh, ls minus l you know touch okay they are all april uh, 27th uh, touch uh, 100 ls minus l yeah you can see there we can do touch operation which means we can change the date and then we can do rename mv landmark dot png landmark you know 3 dot png so even this is possible but if you think about ownership and permissions <laughs> this is not something possible because it's a dummy entry which linux has created as a part of the vfs abstraction file system subsystem within the same and uh, other than uh, this uh, image uh, you can also refer any random images whichever it illustrates this point about the vfs uh, let's open this yeah you can see here even this has a good uh, representation you have this user space and you have this glibc and you have that uh, entire um, uh, no user space libraries and then user space world so below that you have this uh, system call interface so you have this uh, system calls happening between the kernel space to the user space and below the system call as a part of file system subsystem you have this vfs because if it is something about networking you have this socket you know abstraction within the socket you have various uh, you know networking protocols and stuff like that whereas sockets gives that access to the user space so that if you want to communicate something via tcp you can do if you want to do via udp you can do you don't need to create uh, udp and tcp headers <laughs> by yourself manually in user space the, it's the job of kernel kernel does that and if you work in kernel space you can do yourself you can tweak around the ipv4 stack and you can uh, do some uh, changes in that uh, you know header creation of uh, tcp udp headers and stuff like that in the same way if you think about a file system subsystem if you work in kernel space you can touch uh, vfs uh, directly you can do some tweaks and uh, you can even touch the individual uh, file system types uh, uh, ext4 ext3 fat etc you can do changes over there or else you can create your own file system and abstract it within the you know vfs abstraction and below that you have this block layer and then you have that uh, device drivers for these uh, storage uh, devices so like this uh, you can uh, refer other uh, sources this is something quite obvious so this is the reason i don't want to create yet another <laughs> diagram by myself you can just find it anywhere uh, via image search but the point is uh, uh, you have to understand the main role of VFS itself. So this is where the confusion many beginners will have. What is the role of VFS? And they never heard something like this in other operating system examples. Just let's take an example like, you know, Windows OS. So with this, I would like to conclude this episode. Hope you guys loved watching this video. In case if you have anything to discuss, uh, uh, be in touch via mail. Thank you once again for watching this video. Stay tuned. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.